Hello and welcome to the next video all about homeostasis and response. Um, this unit, as you know by now, is building on work you've already studied um, about respiration, cells and enzymes. So here's the whole unit. Um, we started, feels like a long time ago now, doesn't it? But we started with the nervous system. We looked at conscious and unconscious or reflex responses and synapses. We looked at the reaction time practical where you were dropping the ruler. And in the last lesson, uh, we introduced the idea of the endocrine system. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at negative feedback using blood glucose as an example. A lot of what's in this lesson is only for higher tier candidates, but there will be stuff uh, more practice about blood glucose, which is for everyone. If you're not sure which tier you're likely to be sitting, then uh, ask your teacher. As I said, most of the stuff here is for higher tier candidates. But first, it's struggling to remember. Um, I'm going to reveal the questions. I'll read them out one by one, then pause the video, write down your perfect answers and compare them with the answers on the next slide. You know what to do by now. Question one, what gland in the brain is sometimes called the master gland and you have to spell it correctly? What is a hormone? How are hormones carried to target organs? What is osmosis? Why is osmosis called a passive process? What constitutes the CNS, the central nervous system? What is it? Write down the symbol equation for respiration. Pause the video. Okay, ready to move on? Let's look at the answers. Here we go. Pituitary, of course. Make sure you've spelled it correctly. If you haven't, write it out five times. Um, what's the other one I want to draw your attention to? Oh yeah, osmosis, a passive process, like diffusion. No energy is required, it just happens. Okay, pause the video if you need to, and then we'll move on. Okay, let's move on. These are from your notes from the last lesson. Don't look at your notes. Uh, it's about diabetes. On a blank piece of paper, see if you can complete the two missing boxes or the two empty boxes. What's the cause of type 1 diabetes and what's the cause of type 2 diabetes? Pause the video, have a go, and then I'll show you the answers. Okay, I'm going to show you the answers now type 1 diabetes, the pancreas fails to produce sufficient insulin, so this leads to uncontrolled high blood glucose levels. The type 2, the body does not respond to insulin production. The body cells in particular don't respond to the insulin which is produced by the pancreas. And again, this leads to uncontrolled high blood glucose levels. Compare what you wrote with that perfect answer there. You have to learn this stuff. Spend a bit of time doing read, cover, write, check to uh, learn the causes and the treatment for type 1, type 2 diabetes. Okay, let's move on. So this video is about a biological process called negative feedback, which has all sorts of applications in all sorts of different areas of biology. It's specifically for higher tier. Um, check with your teacher whether you're studying for the higher or the foundation tier. Um, but even if you are studying foundation, there is lots of stuff in this video which is useful for you, particularly about blood glucose levels, which we're going to be looking at again in a little bit more detail. So where does this fit in with the rest of the unit? Well, we started with the idea of cells. Um, you are made of cells. The reason you're alive is because your cells are alive. So how do they stay alive? How do they respond to their environment, uh, to changes in their environment? 
we looked at um, the bull jumper in Spain and some of the changes that occurred in his muscles um, in order to allow him to do that, how, that um, how those processes occurred. We looked at this flow diagram which shows how nervous responses occur, stimulus, receptor, coordinator, effector, response. And then we looked at the difference between conscious and unconscious nervous responses. Unconscious nervous responses we called reflexes. Uh, and the difference is that the coordinator for a conscious and an unconscious response is different. And then we looked at synapses, the tiny gaps between the neurons where neurochemicals um, diffuse across the gaps to carry those signals, uh, which are then um, carried electrically down the neurons themselves. We looked at dropping the ruler and different kinds of distractions that would affect your reaction time. And in the last lesson, we looked at the endocrine system and some of the key glands in the endocrine system. Glands, organs which release hormones which are carried by the bloodstream to the target organs in your body. In a moment, you're going to be trying another exam question. But before we do that, have another look at this diagram from the last lesson. It shows what happens when the blood glucose level gets too high, what happens, and when the blood glucose level gets too low, what happens. Pause the video, have a quick look at the diagram to refresh your memory, and then start again and we'll try the exam question. Okay, let's move on. So let's have a go at this exam question. Um, you've got a graph there showing the blood glucose concentration for two different people. This time it tells you that one of them has type 1 diabetes and the other one does not have type 1 diabetes. The question is there, compare the blood glucose concentration of the two people. I've highlighted the command word again, compare. So basically you are describing what's happening at each stage of the graph and comparing one with the other. There are lots of marks here. There are probably six different points you could make. Um, you need to make about four of them uh, to get your four marks. So pause the video have a go at the question and then we'll reveal the mark scheme. Okay, let's have a look at the mark scheme. At first, the person with the diabetes has high blood glucose concentration and the person without. After 30 minutes, we're breaking the graph into sections. Remember, that's what we always do when we're answering these kinds of questions. Okay, lots of different points there. Um, compare that with what you've written. You don't have to write all of that to get four marks, but you have to write at least four of those points. Um, see what you did and see what you might do differently next time for this kind of data question. And then we'll move on. Okay, ready to move on now. This is an animation that shows the pancreas and the two different hormones that the pancreas releases um, to help control blood sugar, uh, blood glucose um, concentration. So the graph in the center is showing the um, blood glucose concentration going up and down and the uh, sort of flashing graphic shows you what hormone the pancreas is secreting um, at each stage of that process. So there you go, uh, when the blood glucose is too low, it releases glucagon and when it's too high, it releases insulin. So I'll just let you watch that uh, for a little bit. Okay, let's move on. So this is a typical negative feedback diagram which shows um, how glucose ver uh, varies, uh, the glucose concentration rather, varies in the blood and how the body responds. So let's start at the left hand side where it says normal blood sugar level and take the top arrow. So normal blood sugar level, too much glucose in the blood, uh, the pancreas detects this it's a coordination center. The pancreas detects this. The hormone insulin is released by the pancreas. Uh, glucose is converted into glycogen, which is stored in the liver and uh, 
some muscles and that means that the glucose is taken out of the blood so the blood sugar um, level returns to normal okay what about if it goes the other way start at the left again and let's take the bottom arrow so normal blood glucose level normal blood sugar level there's not enough glucose in the blood so again the pancreas detects this and secretes a different hormone glucagon and glucagon tells the uh, muscle cells which have glycogen in them and the liver which has glycogen stored in it um, it tells them to turn the glycogen back into glucose which is then released into the blood and so again the blood sh uh, sugar level rises and again it goes back to normal okay so as I said I'm going to give you lots of practice with lots of different kinds of negative feedback um, example diagrams I want you to have a go at using the diagram to write an answer to that question okay I've talked through it um, pause the video and see if you can answer that question using that diagram okay I'm going to show you the answer now So did you write any of these things down in your perfect answer to that question? Did you write that the glucose level rises when you've eaten the glucose tablet? Did you write that the pancreas releases insulin? Glucose is converted to glycogen and glucose level therefore falls. Um, if you've give, written any of those things, then give yourself a mark. OK, let's move on. Now it's time for the missing words round. Um, thinking about the first part of this lesson and the previous lesson, write down as many key words and phrases as you can. In a moment, you're going to be looking at um, a passage which has some words missing. I want you to try and predict what those key words might be. Pause the video, write down as many key words and phrases as you can. Okay, ready to move on. So on a blank piece of paper, I want you to write down this. It's quite a lot, a couple of quite long sentences there. Um, and see if any of the words that you predicted will fit into those gaps. Don't worry, I'll give you a hint in a moment, but I want you to have a go at doing that first. So pause the video, write that down, see if any of the words you predicted uh, will fit into the gaps. OK, these are the actual missing words. Um, see if you can fit them into the spaces and compare those with the words that you predicted. Did you predict some of those? So pause the video again and complete the exercise. OK, ready to move on. Uh, here's the answer. Uh, compare this with what you have written. How close were you? Pause the video, do that comparison, and then we can move on. Okay, let's move on. Okay, it's time for some notes now. Um, there are some quite tricky words in this unit. Um, so I'm going to give you some uh, definitions and notes for these four key words here. Glucose, insulin, glycogen and glucagon. Three of those are quite similar. So it's important that you are um, clear about the differences between them. There you go. There's the definitions. Uh, Pause the video in a moment. Uh, I would take a full A4 sheet of paper, uh, portrait like this, and write those out in a way that you can do read, cover, write, check, so that you can get perfect, uh, so you can learn these perfect definitions and these notes. Um, the particular thing to remember is that insulin and glucagon are hormones, but glucose and glycogen are not. Pause the video, write the notes, then we'll move on. Okay, let's move on. 
So this is the next negative feedback diagram I'm going to show you. This is a general one which can apply to pretty much anything. Uh, remember the first one I showed you was specifically about blood glucose levels, but this is a general one. So let's start at the left hand side. That's not the left, is it? There we are, start at the left. <sighs> Why do I bother? Start at the left hand side. So. Uh, take the top arrow. There's an increase in a particular condition. Something uh, increases, which is above the optimum level. There's that word optimum again. This increase is detected by receptors. And so effectors cause a change that return uh, the level of whatever it is back to the optimum level. And how about the starting at the left again? How about the bottom arrow? A decrease in the condition means that whatever it is is below the optimum. So again, that decrease is detected by receptors. Effectors cause a change, which means that whatever it is will return to its optimum level. So that's a general negative feedback diagram. I strongly recommend that you um, write that down and learn it because then you can apply it to anything. You can apply it to blood glucose, you can apply it to uh, water levels um, in, the, uh, in the body, uh, you can apply it to all sorts of things. A couple of other examples we're going to be looking at in a moment. Pause the video, write that down. Okay, let's move on. The next hormone we're going to look at is called thyroxine. Um, now, there's quite a few notes you need to make about thyroxine. Um, so get a piece of paper ready um, and get ready to make some notes. So what is it? It's produced by the thyroid gland, uh, which you can see in that little animation here. The thyroid gland is here like this. It stimulates the basal metabolic rate. You've done metabolic rate in one of your previous units. It's basically the rate at which all the chemical reactions in the cells of your body take place. So thyroxine is connected with the, uh, the basal metabolic rate, the speed of the chemical reactions in the cells in your body. It's also important for growth and development and it's produced in response to uh, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So thyroxine is produced by the thyroid gland when it receives a signal from um, this other hormone, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. Guess which gland stimulates, t uh, sorry, secretes TSH? It's the pituitary gland, of course, the master gland that controls so many things in the, uh, in the human body. So there we go, thyroxine. Make some notes, uh, pause the video, make those notes in a way that you can do read, cover, write, check. You need all that information in your brain, along with your pituitary gland, in a different part of your brain to your pituitary gland. Okay, ready to move on. Let's see if we can relate this, uh, the production of thyroxine and thyroid gland to our uh, model of negative feedback. So what have we got? We've got a normal level of thyroxine in the blood. What if the thyroxine level gets a little bit too high? Well, the, um, it's carried all around the uh, body in the blood and it is detected by the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland, having detected that there is slightly too much thyroxine in the blood, will um, inhibit or stop or slow down the release of TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So because there's less thyroid stimulating hormone in the blood, which is carried all around the body, um, the thi thyroid gland detects uh, this drop in TSH and so it produces less thyroxine. So the level of thyroxine in the blood decreases and we get back to the optimum level of thyroxine in the blood. That's what happens if um, the level gets too high. How about if the thyroxine level in the blood gets too low? Well, again, this is detected by the pituitary gland, which will then release more TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. 
and because more thyroid stimulating hormone has been released by the pituitary gland carried in the body by the blood to the target organ here the target organ is the thyroid gland so the thyroid gland detects that there is more TSH in the uh, in the blood and so it will produce more thyroxine so the level of thyroxine in the blood will increase to get back to the optimum level I strongly recommend that you play that part of the video again a couple of times, relate it to the diagram you've already got written down of negative feedback, the general diagram showing what happens for negative feedback, and then work your way through it. Think about each stage, what's happening at each stage. OK, so it's a little bit tricky to get your head around this, but spend a little bit of time on it and you'll be fine. It's a bit tricky, but it's not that tricky. You will get it in the end. OK, so pause the video or rewind the video. Look at that little bit again. Relate it to your um, uh, model of negative feedback in general and see if you can try and get your head around it. OK, let's move on. <laughs> No, just let him go. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the the neighbours. Everyone likes tigers. Okay, so adrenaline um, is the next hormone we need to look at, which is governed by um, a negative feedback response. Um, again, ready to make some notes. Um, adrenaline. It's produced by the adrenal glands, which are on the kidneys. Your kidneys are here like that just there uh, a lot more about the kidneys uh, another time uh, just here and the adrenal glands are just over the top of the kidneys i wonder if you heard any of that um, who knows they are released in times of fear or stress they prepare the body for fight or flight or freeze response okay which are all survival responses remember not just fight or flight fight or flight or freeze. Flight uh, just means running away, basically. It's just a nice way of getting the um, alliterative uh, responses there. Fight, flight, freeze. And it increases the heart rate and boosts delivery of oxygen and glucose to the brain or the muscles. So again, pause the video, write down the notes about adrenaline. In a moment, you're going to have a go at uh, quite a long exam question, a five mark exam question. But to prepare for that, what I'd like you to do now is put all your notes away, get a piece of paper in front of you uh, and a whole pen um, and write down as many key words and phrases as you can remember from the last two lessons about blood glucose and negative feedback. Pause the video, write down as many words and phrases as you can. OK, let's move on and have a look at the exam question. So here's the exam question. Explain how insulin and glucagon keep the blood glucose concentration at the correct level in the human body. It's worth five marks. Now then, before you pause the video and have a go at this, think about these things. First of all, the command word, explain. OK, uh, on an exam paper, you draw a box around the command word, wouldn't you, to remind you what it is. Um, next, you need to make sure that you're doing this as a process. What happens, then what happens, then what happens, then what happens, then what happens. Make sure there's a logical sequence. OK, and you can use the list of words and phrases that you've just written down. See how many of those that you can incorporate into this five mark answer. OK. Pause the video, have a go, and then I'll show you the mark scheme. Right, I'm going to show you the mark scheme now. All right, so again, you may need to pause the video and um, see how many of those particular points you made. Uh, in that column there, it shows you which, um, let's see, how can I highlight this? This column here, 
little arrow, shows you how many marks you're awarded for each particular point. And all the points um, are here on this side like this. OK, so pause it again. Have a go. Uh, see how you did. I have no idea what they eat. Cat food? Gazelles? I don't know. OK. So we've looked at a number of different hormones today. We've had a, a more detailed look at um, how blood glucose is controlled. We've looked at the negative feedback system. And we've also looked at the importance, again, of the pituitary gland, however you spell it. Um, thyroxine and adrenaline. Adrenaline that our body produces when we're under stress and provokes a fight, flight or freeze response. And that's where it fits in our map of the uh, unit so far. Well done. Thanks very much for watching and trying all the activities. In the next video, we're going to be looking at more hormones, hormones connected with the menstrual cycle.